Oh, praise the Lord. Worship the Lord. Amen. Daily, we should worship the Lord. Amen. To my pastor, Reverend Charles Simley, for this opportunity to bring the word on this morning to my fellow clergy, to my family, and to my husband, our youth, and our young adults, um, to our program participants, Tyler, wonderful prayer, Terrence, excellent, uh, I'm sorry, Tyler, wonderful introduction, Terrence, a wonderful prayer, Amanda, thank you for that scripture, and Isaiah, you ministered to us in song, and to our praise team, to our members and virtual visitors, I thank you for joining us for our youth and young adult shift Sunday, where we worship God in fun and in truth, amen. Let us pray. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a Sanctuary, Lord, for you. Lord, allow the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, to be found acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our scripture, which was read in our hearing earlier, comes from Matthew 14, verses 22 to 33. I'm going to read it again from the New Living Translation, and it says, immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. Around three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once, don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, Tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, said Jesus. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified. He began, uh, he began to sink and said, save me, Lord. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. The disciples worshiped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed, amen. And for a topic from which to preach, I'm preaching step by step, step by step. Think of the many steps people have taken throughout their lives. You know, people use pedometers and apps on their phones to track their steps. Some have goals of 6,000 steps per day, some 10,000 steps per day. You know, many have witnessed babies take their first steps. But how many other first steps have you taken in life? For some, it may be, uh, for some, it may be the first step to their new job, the first step to buying a home, the first step to starting a relationship. We have some of our young adults entering college this year and they're taking their first steps on their college campus, their first steps in college classes online. Everything that we are and everything that we hope to be starts with just one step, just one step. So my first point this morning is take a step. Take a step in our text, we find Peter taking a step. Verse 28 of our text says, then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, 
come, Jesus said. So Peter stepped out of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. And God is waiting for someone to take a step. Take a step out on faith and start that class. Take a step out on faith and open that business. Take a step out on faith and go for that job. Take Take the step and be like Moses, knowing that if God before you, no one can be against you. Take the step and be like Esther, believing that God needed her to take a step for such a time as this. Be like Joshua and take the first step around your Jericho wall. Many of us, just like some of you, were afraid to take that step to leave from home for the first time was afraid to go off to college and leave our home, but we took the first step and, and we realized that after we took the first step, we just kept taking it step by step. And with the Lord's help, we made it. It is time for someone to get out of the boat. Most of us are comfortable in the boat. You know, we, we, we feel safe and, and we feel protected in the boat. But if you want to go where God wants you to go, if you want to be nearer to Jesus, then you got to step out of the boat. You got to take a step. Somebody ought to comment, take a step. You know, during the Washington Annual Conference, Reverend Matthew Watley gave the opening sermon where he used the phrase, water, work, water, walking faith, water, walking faith. Peter had water, walking faith. And guess what? You do too. All you have to do is trust God and take a step Oh, church, on Monday, you got to walk on. And, and on Tuesday, you, you got to walk on. Let Jesus be your God. I know he's able to carry the load, church. He can see way down the road. Walk on by faith each day. Yes, we need the Lord to lead us and guide us along the way. For if he leads us, we cannot stray. And when the Lord leads you, oh, when the Lord leads you, you'll not only have enough faith to take a step, but you'll also have enough faith to stay in step. And that's point number two, church. Stay in step. Once you take a step, then you got to stay in step. Beginning at verse 30 of our text, it says, but when Peter saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. He shouted, save me, Lord. And Jesus immediately reached out and he grabbed him. And he said, you have so little faith. Why did you doubt me? I like how the Amplified Translation puts it. It says, but when Peter saw the effects of the wind, he was frightened. He began to sink and he cried out, Lord, save me. And I just want to let someone know this morning to not let what is going on around you make you doubt what God has put in you. Don't let what's going on around you distract you from what is happening within you. And we know and understand that there is a lot happening around us right now. COVID-19 and racial unrest and people unemployed and folks depressed because of social distancing and not being able to work. It's becoming overwhelming. Parents worried about their children going back to school or off to college or staying home to do virtual learning. My brothers and sisters, don't become so distracted by what's happening around you that you miss what, is God, what God is doing within you. The greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Can I get a witness? Through all of this, God is building your strength. Through all of this, God is building your faith. Through all of this, God is birthing new visions and expanding your creativity. Through all of this, we must learn to trust in Jesus. And we must learn to trust in God. It was when Peter took his eyes off God and saw the effects of what the wind was doing all around him that he began to sink. If we're going to stay in step, then we must keep our eyes on the Lord. We must look toward the hills from which cometh our help. We must walk by faith and not by sight. To stay in step takes some connection. It takes some coordination. For some of you who can remember your college days, or some of you who may be in college right now, 
You may recall the step shows, uh-huh. I know many of you are in sororities and fraternities, so most likely you participated in a step show. And one thing about a step team, like other teams, is the importance of staying in step. The step show judges often evaluate performance based on certain criteria, two of which are transition and precision. Come on, y'all remember. To transition, does the team transition from one formation to another? Is the movement smooth and choreographed? Precision, are the movements sharp? Are, are, are the members in sync and on beat uh, the entire time? Come on, y'all know. Those, those sharp movements, you know, where the arm goes, the head goes, come on. Well, now more than ever, church, it's important for us to stay in step. We have to be aware of our transition and our precision. How are we transitioning from challenge to challenge? How are we able to navigate through life right now? We know that time is filled with swift transitions, but we don't have to handle these trans transitions alone. Jesus is there to make the crooked places straight and the rough places smooth. Stay in step with your precision. All the members must be in sync. The body of believers must come together. Now is not the time for dissension. Now is not the time to fall apart. But now is the time for us to unite. Unite in prayer. Unite in action. My God, unite at the poles. Unite in your homes. When you, when, when we're going to need each other. And we're going to need God if we're going to stay in step. In order to stay in step, you got to be connected to God. Jesus even recognized this, which is why in the beginning of our text, we find Jesus going alone to pray. Oh, my young people and adults, if you're going to stay in step, you have to make sure you're spending time with God. We must be in sync with him so that when he moves, you move just like that. Uh, we must trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your path. We must allow God's word to be a lamp unto our feet, light unto our path. Oh, God, guide my feet while I run this race, for I don't want to run it in vain. Stay in step. And then lastly, church, we must step up. That's point three, step up. At the end of verse 30, as Peter begins to sink, he cries out, save me, Lord. And it says, Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. Sometimes in order for you to step up, you're going to have to be picked up. In order for you to step up, you're going to have to be picked up. Some of us need a little pick me up, amen? And some, some of our, our parents, uh, 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 some of our young people, they just need a little pick-me-up. They, they, they need a little boost. They need some encouragement. They need some positivity poured back into their life. Can you pick them up so that God will allow them to step up? Some of you may find yourself in a low place today. Well, guess what? Jesus can find you there. Just like he found those disciples in the middle of the water with the winds and the waves all around them. He met them in their storm and Jesus will meet you in your storm too. And when it becomes too hard for you to handle, Jesus will be right there. Jesus is there to meet you when you begin to sink and he will pick you up so that you can step up. And when you have Jesus by your side, holding your hand, you can step up church. You can step up in your faith, you can step up in your worship. You can step up in your kindness. You can step up in your giving. You will keep stepping up. And you'll discover that every round goes higher and higher. Young people, you'll be saying, I'm all the way up. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. I, I, I know someone may be saying, Preacher, you don't know how far I've fallen. But let me tell you that even if God has to reach way down, he can still pick you up. Amen, somebody. Allow Jesus 
to help you up. Grab hold of his hand. Take it step by step, my brother. Take it step by step, my sister. Take a take a step. Uh, uh, take a step. Uh, stay stay in step and, and and step up. Because I come to remind somebody this morning that to the utmost, Jesus says he will pick you up. He'll turn you around. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. If you're ready to step up, if you're ready to take a step, if you're ready to get out of the boat, somebody ought to type, I'm ready. If you're glad this morning that Jesus picked you up, then you ought to lift up your hands in praise. Because I don't know about anybody else, but I remember a time when I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within thinking to rise no more, but the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me, now safe am I. How many of you know that love can lift you when nothing else can help? Love will lift you. Allow God to lift you up step by step. Allow love to lift you this morning. Perhaps you're listening or watching today and you feel like you're sinking, feel like you're drowning from the pressures of life, drowning in your sin, drowning in your sadness. But Jesus wants to lift you up today and save you. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Come on and receive Christ into your heart and into your life today. All you have to do is take it step by step. The first step is to admit that you're a sinner. The second step is believing that Jesus is the son of God, that he died for your sins and he was raised from the dead. And the third step is confessing that Jesus is Lord over your life. If you do those three things, the Bible says you will be saved. If you'd like someone to help you walk through those steps, then you can dial the church at 410-922-3286, select option four, and we'll have someone to help you. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that you walk with us that you talk with us, and that you call us your very own. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to take it step by step and, and one day at a time. Continue, Lord God, to order our step and to guide our feet, Lord God. Bless us, God, as we travel, God, through these uncertain times. Lord God, believing and trusting, God, that you're making a way for us, Lord God, that you're paving the path. And God, that you have great things in store for us, but you have plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give you a hope, give us a hope in the future. We thank you, God, for your word that's gone forth. We pray, God, that it found fertile ground. We pray, God, that somebody might be changed and somebody might be saved. Now, God, take us into another week. Protect us, Lord God. Provide for us, Lord God. Give us the strength that we need to make it day by day. God, we ask a special blessing on our young people, Lord God especially those, Lord God, who have already left for college or preparing God to start college, whether physically or online, God. We pray, God, that you give them everything that they stand in need of. God, that you protect them, Lord God, that you keep them safe, Lord God, that you keep them healthy, Lord God. Continue, God, to provide, Lord God, for them. Continue to bless our pastor, Lord God, and his family. Bless our Union Bethel family, God. Bless all of our visitors today, Lord God. God, we pray, God, that your will continue to be done in our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before this presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.